good Wednesday evening to everybody. Let's stand as we begin our service. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord. We're going to open with prayer tonight. We've got several that are sick. Uh, we want to pray for Sister Callie. Uh, we want to pray for Brother Donnie Bentel. Um, and uh, there are some more that we need to pray for. Remember Brother McKinney and his situation. We need the Lord to move in that. And he needs help. He needs prayer for his health as well. Uh, Sister Norman, Brother Dole, Sister Barker. Uh, there's a few more. Anybody have a request over here? All right. Anybody else? Yes, sir. All right. Sister Margaret. All right. Mom. Sister Terry. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ronnie. All right, Brother Shannon. All right. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. Oh, goodness. All right. Stay. Yes, yes. Yes, let's pray right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, trusting you, believing in you, the power of your word, the power of your spirit. God, help us, help us, Lord. We want to be more like you, less like us. I pray, God, for every request that was mentioned here tonight. I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost is manifest. I pray, Lord, that there's healing virtue that begins to flow. Let it flow, Lord Jesus, in the power of your spirit. I pray for every request that's mentioned here, spoken or unspoken, everyone that's struggling with sickness. I pray, God, against the COVID still. I pray for those that have taken the vaccine to be all right. I pray, God, for our elders that are struggling with their health. I pray, God, for situations that we need you to move in. I pray, God, for the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus.
comes against you and that standard is a flag and the Lord raises up his flag his banner and says you're not welcome here well there's a good presence of the Lord in this house right now there's a sweet spirit thank you for coming those that are joining us online we're glad that you're here we do have many out sick tonight and uh uh, I'm, I'm just going to caution you. I always will. won't stop. If you can be here, be here. If you can, be here. And uh, I uh, went to visit Sister Virginia the other day, and she's unable to get out. She doesn't get out at all anymore. Uh, she told me she doesn't even go to the doctor. They talked to her over the telephone. But she began to talk about her desire to be in the house of God, and it just broke my heart. I don't ever want to get to the place where I don't want to be here. Amen. Let it be because I can't. Circumstances, situations, but if I can, Brother Shannon, sometimes I got to fight through me. But I know when I get here, something's going to happen just like it did. The presence of the Lord is just going to start. He's going to come down and be with me because he likes this as much as we do. Huh? He enjoys being with us and us being together. We're going to receive our evening offering tonight. And uh, uh, again, I want to just brag on you. I brag on you to my buddies. I was today. One of my friends from up north called me. And I just really, I said, this church is not only that, the Lord has just been opening up the windows of heaven. And, and we're on a track right now. Um, things continue as they are we're going to be completely out of debt and we're going to start putting money toward a new building and when the time comes brother Terrence everybody starts getting a little nervous when the time comes we'll just write a check for it why not why not the Lord's already brought I got to be honest with you I, 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 don't, I don't need no response or anything 
But if we don't get not one more stimulus check, we're going to be fine. I'll tell you what I did with my first one. I signed the back of it, put it in the bank. My right wife wrote it right back to the government, pay my tax bill with. Huh? God's going to take care of us, folks. He always has. He always has. He always has. So thank you for your giving. You guys are just incredible. Those that watch us online with us. Uh, we have people that, that support this church faithfully that had never even darkened the door. And they've become faithful supporters of this church. And, and uh, uh, we lost some giving here a while back. And the Lord sent us somebody that has replaced. That was an annual thing we lost, Brother David. And the Lord has sent that much every month. Every month. What was a whole year's worth of giving. Amen. And I thank the Lord for it. I thank the Lord for it. So we're going to continue to give. Those of you that are watching online that you want to give, be a part of this. And, and uh, uh, I, so we can't tell everything. But if I could, I could stand up here for a whole service, Brother David, and testify of the financial blessings that our people have received since we started saying this prayer. I could stand up here for a whole hour and talk about the blessings, the raises, the bonuses, the gifts, the checks in the mail. Sometimes, Sister Carol, we even find stuff Brother Johnny had rat hold. Amen? Huh? The Lord has blessed us, and we're going to keep giving. We take on more missionaries. We have not had one missionary. Just let me talk to you for a minute. There's not been one missionary come to this church that we haven't been able to take on as a monthly partner. Not one. Our missions given has went, Brother David, from $200 a month to over $800 a month. Every month we give to missions. There's a reason why the blessings keep flowing. Amen? Because we keep doing what the book says. Give. And it will be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Thankful for faithful givers. You can send it in P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, Give LaFi, PayPal, which is on www.riverbendpentecostals.com. You can call us. We'll come pick your offerings, your tithing, etc. up. You can put it in my mailbox, and I'll bring it here and get it put in. Amen. And the Lord is still blessed. Let's pray together upon the authority of your word. I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gift and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, Bless going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Please bring your tithing and your offerings forward. As we go back, long way back, sing it. One of my favorite ones. Let's sing it together. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary. To save a like me. Oh, me and he bought me with his redeemed. 
have mercy on us when he starts getting that stuff down pat amen all right y'all head on back students age 12 to 18 can be dismissed now I tell you we're going to be doing some remodeling pretty soon and we're going to take a wall out on the west side over there we're going to make a room just like on that side just like we have on this side for the young people for the students they're going to have their room over there and then we'll have the kids room over here and, and uh, we're excited about that amen everyone have a handout amen I sure do appreciate little Scarlett. Here she comes up the aisle so we can brag on her. She's really been good to help me. Done work back there since Sister Heidi's been laid up. But we, we look forward to Sister Heidi being back. And uh, uh, getting up on her feet again. I know Brother David will be glad too. Yeah. Amen. I know she will too. She said she can't even go to the refrigerator by herself. Let me tell you something, folks. It's going to have to get bad before old G Money can't make it to the fridge. <laughs> going to have to get bad. Because I can crawl my way in there to the icebox. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey Amen. Boy, I'm excited about the word tonight. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing, folks. Amen. He's doing some good things. And they were singing that song, when the enemy comes in like a flood. Most of the time, that flood looks like discouragement. Any kind of a stupid little old thing to get you discouraged. And because if we, if we ever get discouraged, if the enemy can get one negative word of out of our mouth, it's like a waterfall, like a flood rushing in. Before you know it, you hate everything, everybody, you know, just, I'm just going to run away. You know, anybody ever thought about that since you've been grown? Running away? Boy, I have. I have. It didn't work out too good when I was young. That refrigerator had something to do with that back then, too. But the Hebrews chapter number four. I um, feel like I've got something to share with us. Um, I want us to pray, be prayerful, be thoughtful. I shared it with small group last night. I've shared it with others before. But... Brother Raymond Woodward taught me one time in a class I was in, Jesus Christ never, you hear me? Never asked for volunteers. When he want, had a job he wanted somebody to do, he went to them and said, I'd like for you to do this. I'd like for you to do this. So I want you to be praying because we got to get staffed. Thank you, Brother Shannon, Brother David. If you wait till they're here to try to prepare for them, you ain't going to be ready. We got to be ready. Amen. 
we got to have everything from the parking lot to the pew manned, staffed. We got to have people working. It's got to be ministry. It's got to be ministry, and you got to view it that way. This is going to take us a step. There's nothing that happens in your life more important than hearing the Word of God. The Word of God saves us. We're born again by the Word of God. And there are some powerful things that happen when the Word of God goes forth. Uh, many people, and I'm proud that they do it, uh, and it's going to show. They go home and watch church again and write down things and glean things from it. Because you see, Brother Shannon, we got to get to the place where I don't want to miss a thing. If it comes to me, I, I, I won't remember. Help me right now, Holy Ghost. You, I can't expect you to remember everything that is said here. But I can expect you to remember how you felt when it was said. Which is what draws you back to the computer screen. And let me tell you what you can do. You can hit pause. Back it up. Listen to it again. Pause. Think about it. Go to the Bible. Figure it out. Ladies and gentlemen, the day has come when we're going to have to put in the effort to receive what God has for us. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. In a nutshell, the writer of Hebrews is saying, we got to be afraid that even one person would miss out on the promise of entering into his rest. We got to be afraid. We got to be concerned. We've got to be aware of the necessity of everybody being saved. The analogy of rest, and you'll notice I think in your handout that I capitalized it, that's simply because I'm talking to you about the place of rest. But it's not a place to go to sleep. All right? It's not a place to go to sleep. But here is in Hebrews 3 and 4, the writer uses the analogy of rest. And rest is expressing to the reader of the book of Hebrews what the, that rest is what the promised land was to the children of Israel. You see, the Lord made a promise to Abraham. I'm going to explain to you. The Lord made a promise to Abraham. In that land, he said, as far as you can see, I'm going to give you this land. And I'm not just going to give you this land. I'm going to give you a bunch of children to fill this land up. And somewhere down the road, in your lineage or in your heritage, there is going to be a blessing come into the world called Jesus Christ. The promised land's ultimate purpose was to provide a, a, a ground, if you will, a birthplace for the Messiah, for Jesus Christ. The analogy of rest is that when the children of Israel came into the promised land, they would no longer be strangers. They would no longer be slaves. They would no longer be wanderers. They would no longer be intruders. They would no longer be unwelcome. But they would be in a place that was stable. They would be in a place where they had identity. They would be in a place that belonged to them. And it is a place of rest. I come tonight to teach you, to share with you that the Lord has a promised land for everybody that's in here. The promised land does not represent heaven. The promised land represents the fulfillment in your life of God's plans. The promised land doesn't represent heaven. I've told you before, why do we know the promised land doesn't represent heaven? What was in the promised land that stopped them from going? Giants, walled cities, enemies, obstacles. Honey, there ain't no obstacles in heaven. 
When we make it into heaven, there's no more tears, no more sadness, no more heartache, no more death, no more crying, no more separation, for the former things are passed away. Heaven is going to be great. We can't even really fathom what heaven is going to be like. You take the best experience you've ever had with God here and multiply it by eternity, and that's when you find how good heaven is. But the promised land is the rest. The promised land is when you step over into your niche and into your place in the body of Christ and you start doing what God puts you on this earth to do. And everybody in this room right now, I don't care who you are, and if you in your mind and in your spirit, you begin to think, I don't have no place, the Holy Ghost is going to rebuke you because you are mistaken. The Bible says he put every believer in the body as it pleaseth him. You are where you need to be or you are going to where you need to be. That is the purpose of coming to the house of God, especially on Wednesday night. Because Wednesday night is Bible study. It's when we break the word down. Preaching is on Sunday and that is at 11 o'clock, that is to build faith and to reach the lost. But on Wednesday night, we teach the word to empower people. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't come to empower just those that have the Holy Ghost. I came to empower everybody under the sound of my voice. Because if you ain't got the Holy Ghost yet, it's the plan of God that you get the Holy Ghost. And the plan of God for your life predates you receiving the Holy Ghost. Brother Shannon, he doesn't wait till you're filled with the Holy Ghost uh, until he starts making plans for you. But we learned last night uh, that the plans that God has made for us uh, predate the foundation of the world. I'm ahead of myself just a little bit, but I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. We got to know it, and you got to grab a hold of it. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not being mean. This is probably the toughest thing I'm going to say tonight. If you don't find your place in the kingdom of God, it is not my fault. Brother David, everything we've experienced shouldn't be a surprise to nobody in this place who's heard us preach and teach for the last nine years. I'm not responsible for the vision under Pastor McKinney. I'm not responsible for that. But I am responsible for the oversight, and the propagation, the promotion, and the placement of this assembly in the body of Christ. Making sure you have everything you need to get where you're supposed to be. I know there ain't very many here tonight. That may be why. It's because the Lord wants to make sure I get everybody lined out. And the ones that ain't lined out, they just stayed home. And I'm just teasing. That's just a joke. That's just a joke. That's just a joke. If you're watching online, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just laughing about it. The promises... Of the promised land were abundant and filled with blessings. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. And those promises weren't just for the moment. Boy, I talked to Brother Huckabee today. We're going to get him down here to preach for us before long, my friend Jason Huckabee. But I talked to him today, boy, and he gave me some stuff. If I tried to teach it all, ooh wee, I'll just wait, it's coming. But I want you to listen to this. The promises of God that you feel that you're experiencing are not just for you, but they're also for your heritage. The habits, the spirit that you establish in your home, you understand the promises of God. Abraham got those promises when he didn't have no children. But the promises were for, and, and that's why the Bible says he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even though the promise came to Abraham. But God continually confirmed it. Can I get an amen in the house? The Lord confirms his promise, and when he gives it to you, he gives it to you for a legacy. That your children would do what you've done and more. That's why we better be very careful how we behave at the house. It ain't how you act in church that's going to impact your children. It's how you behave yourself at the house. 
There's no end to the promises of God. We've got promises for heaven. The place, the people, and the promises of God were coming together. That the word and the plan of God might come to pass. Here's the back story. After approximately 400 years in Egypt, the children of Israel were miraculously delivered from bondage and slavery. Numbers, the 13th chapter says, around two years later, they were camped right on the edge of the promised land. They done been to the mountain and got the law, Brother David. They done experienced the blessings of God, the affirmation of God. They'd already been through the water and under the Spirit. They'd already had a fire by night and a cloud by day. Y'all remember? The Lord had already proven that he was with them, that he was blessed them beyond the exodus. So two years they stand on the, the threshold of the promised land. Twelve spies are sent out. Each one of them a leader. Each one of them a prominent man in his tribe. One from each tribe. And they were going to inspect the land. and See who was there. See what it looked like. What did the cities look like. And to see if the land was as blessed as they were told. Now, all 12 came back with a good report to a point. It was exactly what the Lord told us it was. It really is as good as the Lord said it was. Every promise he gave is true. Can I tell you tonight that it really is as good as the Lord said it was? And... But then we had a division. Ten of the spies said, as good as it is, it's got some obstacles in the way that we can't overcome. Men bigger than we are at walled cities. Matter of fact, they already decided what they look like to the enemy. They said, if you ever read that, look how arrogant it was. They said, we look like grasshoppers to them and they thought so too. They don't know what the giants were thinking. They never even interacted with them. They just peeped at them around the tree. But they decided, have you ever been in a place where you decided what your enemy thought about you? Huh? Well, I want to try to rearrange our thinking and for us to really, really learn what our enemy thinks about us. And what our enemy really thinks about us is I hope they don't get this word. I don't hope they don't get this word because if they get this in them, all heaven's going to break loose. Huh? So, 10 of them said, no, we can't do it. Two of them said, Joshua and Caleb, they said, oh, come on, let's go up at once. We can do this. Right. Right. Caleb said, no, they're like bread for us. We're going to slice them and dice them, put some butter on them and eat them. It ain't no big deal. God said it's ours. Matter of fact, oh, I love this. I love it. I want to preach about it. Uh, Caleb even said, I got my spot picked out already. Right. He did. He said, I saw that mountain. I got it. It's mine. I want it. But the ten began to be loud and the crowd joined up with them and the people believed the ten and the judgment of God was handed out. The promise would still be there but it was going to be delayed for around 40 years which the children of Israel would wander in the wilderness until all the unbelievers aged 20 and above were dead. Hebrews 3 and 4 compare the promises of God under the new covenant to the promised land, which is the place, the people, and the promises, the place where the people and the promises come together. I got to help you find that place where you, the promises of God, are in the right place. For it all to come together, Brother Shannon. Verse 1 paints a somber picture of a similar occurrence. I'm going to tell you this right now, real quickly. You ain't going to find your place in God by becoming more like the world. You're going to find it by becoming more like Him. And the closer you get to him, the more the world's going to fall off of you, not get on you. 
Can I get a witness? Okay. We cannot. We cannot. We cannot. I watched a message by Brother Mike Williams Sunday afternoon. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. There's a reason why the Lord said, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Thank you, Sister Nadine. Oh, that's coming. I'm going back to Nehemiah real soon. I'm going to finish. I didn't get done. I think I taught 27, 28 lessons and never even got started on rebuilding God's wall. Anybody remember that? Yeah. It's coming back. I'm going to get finished with it. We're going to finish exploring God's word too, Brother David. The pandemic kind of just put the cohetus on some of our series. The first one paints a somber picture of a similar occurrence where this promised land, the place where the promises of God are going to come to fruition in the new covenant. But he said, let us be leery, let us be fearful, let us be cautious, aware of the possibility of some of us falling short of entering into the place of rest. we got to be concerned about people who ain't going forward. Say, well, I'm not going backwards. If you ain't going forward, you're going backwards. Okay. So, verse number two, this is pretty self-explanatory. I don't even really have to break it down. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So, we both heard it. Is anybody here last Wednesday night? Hearers and doers? For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. They didn't gain anything from it. They didn't glean anything from it. Why? It wasn't mixed with faith in them that heard it. But Ronnie, we got to show up to the house of God expecting to hear from him. Not just expecting to hear something, Brother Terrence, that makes us feel good, but expecting to hear something that changes us. Expecting to hear, we got to be willing to pray, Lord, chastise me, correct me, uh, encourage me we got to have it all when we come to the house of God and you will you will but you got to be honest enough to say if I need something if I am falling short in something I hope uh, sister Eloise told me well, I don't know what it was about falling short but she had something going on in her life I didn't ask her if I could tell this so if, if, if I'm not supposed to I'll get in trouble after a while but uh, uh, she said there was something going on in my life here a while back and, and I prayed and I said Lord would you please let brother GL preach about this and she said the very next service I preached everything she needed to know But that's how it works. You want to know, I feel the Holy Ghost. You want to know that's why it works? God is for you, not against you. Huh? He's for you. I've used this analogy before, but he could have told Thomas, go fly a kite. Those ten guys were in the room and they rejoiced that the Lord arose. Thomas wasn't there. And he comes back and says, if I don't see the scars and put my hand in his side, I will not believe it. The Lord could have said, okay, you just miss out. But you know what happened a week later? The Lord showed up, spread his hands, showed him his side, said, touch me, touch me. You know why the Lord did that? Because he's for him, not against him. Do you know what kind of revolution is going to take place in this world if the people of God start realizing that God is for you and not against you, that the church is for you and not against you, and the Bible is for you and not against you? We're going to change the world. Because that's why you got the Holy Ghost in the first place. Ah, uh, yes, go get into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's the word of God. So, if you're not listening to the word with faith, and here's the deal. You ain't supposed to get it every time the first time. Brother David, that's why we take notes. That's why I get a text message from Brother Terrence 
or somebody that says, I didn't understand that lesson last time. And so let's get together and get it fixed. But the word, you've got to have faith when you come to the house of God, no matter who's preaching. Because it ain't the preacher, ladies and gentlemen, it's the word. And I said it before, somebody liked it. I think it was Brother Terrence. He thought I was cool. Sometimes I say things that are kind of funny and cool, and if it makes people laugh, it makes me feel good. Y'all know how that rolls? Ain't nothing make you feel worse than tell a joke nobody laughs at. The Lord used a donkey as his messenger. You've got to understand that whoever we have come up here and preach, they may not be your favorite person in the world. But if you can get off of the fact that they're not your favorite person and open up your ears, God will speak into your life through them. All right. The same word was preached, but those who received it with faith and those who didn't ended up in a different place. They missed out, and the missing out is a direct result of unbelief. It's verse number three. For we which have believed, you know that is those that heard the word mixed with faith. Right? Just hearing the word ain't enough. It ain't enough. Just hearing the word gets you a house wreck when the storm comes. It is, Brother David. That's why we really bought Brother Sharon, Trent Sharon sent me something before church or this earlier today. And I started to run it off and give it to all of us. But I'm going to teach it and then I'm going to give it to us about why we pray before we come to the house of God. When you pre-service prayer is to prepare you for whatever God has for you. Say, well, I work right up to church time. Pray on your way to church. Okay, we got to be ready because this is eternity. I said, this is eternity. What would you say, sis? Yes, for sure. But we learned a couple of weeks ago, there comes a time when there's only one service between you and eternity. You know, on Monday, that week, Brother David, on Monday, somebody said to me something to the effect, Oh, it's all right to miss. It's just one service. One service has changed forever in my mind. Just one service? I don't want to go into it, but you know I'm telling you the truth. For we which have believed, that heard the word mixed with faith, we believed that the word was going to work for us. Do enter into rest. So it's the word that gets you there. As he has said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although, this connects to Ephesians 2 and 10, Brother Shannon, Brother Terrence, Brother Tripp, all the others that were there last night, small group, It's the same principle. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in God in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You tie that with Hebrews 4 and 3, Brother David, it tells us that the plan of God was in place for your life from the foundation of the world. Now, you're not hearing me, I don't think. Just as important as it was for the planets to be where they go and the sun and the stars to be where they go is for you to get where you're supposed to go. And me, for you and I, to be where we're supposed to be. It's the same plan. You think about that. How powerful is that? It's the same plan. Because it's the logos, Brother David. 
It's John chapter number 1, verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. When He was planning this universe, you were in it. Can you all explain that a different way? The rest is the place that's yours. And it was designated before the world began. Okay. Verse number 11. Let us labor, therefore... Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. What's that word labor mean? I'm glad that you asked. It's your effort. It's your energy and your focus. It is what I'm striving for. If you want to put any effort out, you say, boy, I just don't think I can do this living for God. And I don't think you're trying to do the wrong thing. Let your effort be in getting where God wants you to be. That place of rest. Am I clear on that? Is everybody clear on that? The promised land is the, the place God lets you be born to put you there. Our effort and our focus is on finding our place, realigning and aligning with our purpose. And the penalty for unbelief is failure. I'm not convinced 100% that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, what the Bible says is the unforgivable sin, I'm not convinced that that's not simply unbelief. Because you can't be saved if you don't believe. Can't happen. He ain't saving nobody against their will. It's ours. It's ours. His work was done when he bowed his head and said it's finished. Not another thing needed to be done for you and I to be able to get where we're supposed to go. He's already done all of his. Now it's up to us to align ourselves with the man of God, the word of God, and the spirit of God. All right. The penalty for unbelief is failure. Just as the unbelieving children of Israel missed out on their rest, so will we if we refuse to believe what God says. Now I'm going to say this. I think the greatest manifestation of our unbelief is a refusal to believe that God can use me. Brother David, you know what the children of Israel were really saying when they said we can't go to the promised land? They were really saying God's a liar. He lied. He didn't tell us the whole story. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, everybody under the sound of my voice, whether in the house, online, or even online after a while, you got a job to do for the kingdom of God. And you got to believe you've got a job to do. And I hope that as we launch forth from this night, that somewhere in your daily prayer is, Lord, lead me where you need me to be. I pray it every day. I pray this every day. Order my steps in your word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. That's part of my daily prayer. I pray just when I walk down Main Street, I pray, Lord, just as sure as I know where I'm going in the flesh, I want to know where I'm going in the spirit. Show me, lead me, direct me, put somebody else in my life to tell me. But I got to know. I want everything the Lord has for me, don't you? All right. Verse 12. This is our Bible study right here. For the word of God is quick 
and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, the mission and ministry of the word has violent potential as it pertains to our lives. And, and after a while, there's going to be so many new worshipers with us that I won't be able to point Brother Ronnie out. But I want to tell you, it was a Wednesday night Bible study that pierced into his heart. And it was violent. It assaulted his thinking. And it got a hold of him and it wouldn't let go. And we've got to, let the, we've got to encourage the word to do that to us. Amen. The mission and ministry of the word has violent potential. Every time you come to the house of God, you could hear the word that changes your life. It is designed. The Word of God is designed. Those of you from Sunday morning elements class, which if you don't come, I encourage you to think about coming. It is designed to assault our senses and our feelings and our status quo. The Bible is designed to shake you out of where you are. It is designed to sometimes hurt your feelings. It is designed sometimes to shake you. It is designed sometimes to take you to the woodshed. There are times when you will walk out of church and have to take your shoes off because your toes is all swelled up. But I want to try to bring us to a place where we embrace that rather than push it away. Where we're excited about it because we've lost sight of the preacher because you will run the word of God through the filter of what you think about the preacher. You will. But we've got to get to the place where we don't do that. We run the filter of the Word of God through, I know God wants something for me, and then if this upset me today, I know a preacher ain't after me. Because pastor and the Lord are trying to get aligned, and the Lord's for you, and I'm for you too. I'm for you. It is designed, you might want to write this down, the Word of God is designed to assault. Y'all know what I mean by assault? A-S-S-A-U-L-T? Your senses, our feelings, and our status quo. It is designed to provoke us. Bringing us, remember this from Sunday, I hope you wrote it down, bringing us to a place of confrontation with the divine will of God. That's the word. is to bring you to a place where you come face to face with the will of God and you have to make a decision. I'm feeling the power of the Holy Ghost on me tonight. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost moving in this house right now. It is designed to bring us to a place. But if you don't have faith, if you don't have faith, you're going to miss it. And then you respond to the word carnally, which is angry, mad, ain't coming back no more. Who does he think he is anyway? I promise you, I don't get on Facebook before I come in here and preach, looking to see what you posted or didn't post. Matter of fact, a whole lot of y'all, I ain't even got you on my Facebook no more. I hid you. I'm just telling the truth. You put all that political nonsense on there and all that negative stuff on there and, and how you went to, you know, went to eat at Two Tonys and, and, you know, you saw a roach on a window. I ain't got time for all that stuff. I ain't got time for all that. All I do is get mad at you. You ashamed of me, honey? 
I saw her hiding her face. It's the truth. I don't want that junk in my life. And I don't want it affecting my preaching. Because it's hard, Brother David, if somebody just gets overloaded on stupid and not get up here and try to fix them. I don't want to do that. I want to let the Word work on you. I want to let the Word work on you. Because it's the Word that's going to take you to the promised land. It's the Word going to take you to the place of rest. Brother Shannon, you're experiencing some of it. And he came and told me this. But I've got all kinds of notes about it. When you get lined up with the power and the purpose of God, it ain't hard work no more. It just starts happening. And it starts happening to the place where you almost think something's wrong because it's so easy. But all that's happened is you got connected to the vine and you're starting to produce the fruit that God wanted you to produce in the first place. And when you get into the right place, you don't have to work to make it happen. Because you ain't making it happen. He is. That's right. Amen. And there ain't no limit in what God can do. Come on, He walks on the water like it ain't nothing. He turns water into the wine. He's a rock that wallows in the wilderness and waters the whole nation. There ain't no limit to who God is. And all that happens is we've stepped into His perfect will. And when you get there, He's going to work through you. And you won't go home. Oh, this is so tired and weary. No, you're thinking, I got to hurry up and get in the morning and get to doing it again. Because I ain't never had so much fun living. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for getting excited. The word is meant to be a separator. A divider. I thought this up, Brother David. I don't know if it's 100% fact, but it came to me right before church. The Word does for us what the wilderness did for the children of Israel. The wilderness was designed to get rid of the unbeliever. Not the weak believer, the unbeliever. The one that said, no way. The one that said God's a liar. That's all the wilderness was designed to do. Is to perfect them. And the word of God is our perfecter. It is. It's what lasts. All flesh and the glory of man is as the grass. But the word of God liveth and abideth forever. It's meant to be a divider, a separator. Not only dividing the believer from the unbeliever, but empowering the believer to go up at once and possess the land. The Word of God. And when when you hear the Word, and it gives birth to a new faith in you, that's what empowers you to go out, lay hands on the sick, and they recover. That's what empowers you to go out and tell somebody, meet me at the cab of my truck after the, after the uh, uh, quitting time. And you break open your Bible and you teach somebody a Bible study. I, I read something the other day about an older lady. She's like 80 years old. She pulled into a gas station and there was a young lady at the next pump. And she, while she's filling her car up, she taught that lady a Bible study and prayed her through to the Holy Ghost in the parking lot of a filling station. Y'all don't believe me? Or something? Are you scared to go get gas anymore? That's a true story. She's like 80 or 85 years old and she pulls up to get gas and sees this girl, you know, looking a little sad and she said, hey, I got something to help you. And that girl, I'm telling you, Brother David, she prayed with her and she lifts her hands and begins to speak in other tongues in the parking lot of a gas station. That's where we're headed. I was talking to somebody the other day that they said it's unusual for them to see other people baptizing folks because we're so used to pastor doing all the baptizing. Pastor ain't going to be able to keep up with all the baptizing. We ain't going to wait till church service, Brother David. 
We're going to be baptizing people seven days a week. I'm declaring it. Will you go with me? The word is quick and alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Let's talk about quick. That means alive. That means alive right now. It's the same thing, Brother Larry, small group guys. It's the same thing when, when Mr. Wiersbe said, I read the Bible in the present tense. That's the same thing. When I read the word, I don't read it like it used to happen or like it's going to happen. I read it like it's happening. That's what it means. The word is alive. It's not a dead document, but it's alive. Okay? And it is present right now. And it is applicable right now. The word hits me where I am. And it's powerful. That means it's active. That it's at work. That it's effective. That the word does what it was designed to do. I didn't put this in my notes, but I thought about it. But Isaiah the 55th chapter says uh, that the, I'm going to maybe paraphrase a little bit in the GL version. But the Bible says uh, the word goes out and it does what I wanted it to do. And it don't come back empty handed. The word does what it's supposed to. We've learned tonight the difference is the faith of the hearer. If I'm not getting it, if it ain't working in my life, the problem ain't with the Word, the problem ain't with the pastor, and the problem certainly ain't with God. I got to go to prayer and figure out what's wrong with me. Okay. It's effective. It's powerful. It's at work doing what it's designed to do. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And that is metaphorically speaking to the ability of the word to cut exactly where and how it desires to in your life. I told you it assaults you. It assaults you. We'll preach on something and you go out of here and try to do it and the Holy Ghost will whip you up one side and down the other telling you you don't need to do that. And Brother Terrence, we're going to get to a place where we trust him and we don't even have to know why. Look at here. That means piercing. That's carrying the thought of sharp to greater depths in the hearer. Going far past where the ears and the logic rest into the innermost places of our life where it's needed. And here's what that sharp piercing sword does. To the dividing of soul and spirit. Here's the deal. The soul is the animal me. That's the me I'm the boss of. The spirit is the me that when I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, the Lord's the boss of. Okay? So it's getting me into a place where I'm receptive to the spirit, the leading of the spirit. So it divides the soul and spirit and it divides the joints and the marrow. I beat myself up all day trying to figure out what that's talking about. And right before I came to church this afternoon, I read something that like I haven't searched it out. You're welcome to. But you know what I read this joints and marrow is? It's sacrifice terminology. It's what the high priest did to the sacrifice before he offered it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. You know what the word helps me do? Become presentable unto God. That I might offer myself as a sacrifice unto him. It's the preparation of the sacrifice to offer it to God. He would cut it at certain joints and cut it in the right place. So I haven't had time to search it out. I just read it in the commentary and I was like, I think there's something there. The word prepares you to submit your whole life to God as a living sacrifice. Are you with me? And it says it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Thoughts, anybody know what thoughts means? Thoughts, exactly what it says. 
and the intents. You know what that means? That's my want to. The word of God goes inside of me and discerns where my desire is. My response to the word declares where my heart is. See, the heart is the seed of the ministry of God to us. He exposes our desires, reaching into areas we don't allow access. I'm coming to the close. All of these applications, stand with me. It's my last comments. All of these applications, literal and metaphorical, serve to declare unto us that the Word of God is designed to both give us the promise take us to the place of fulfillment and empower us to overcome every obstacle between us and fulfillment. It gives me the promise. It takes me to the place of fulfillment, the promised land, and it gives me power to kill the giants and tear down the walled cities. The rest is the place where the Lord wants me to work. He wants to put me, and I belong there. The Word is what enables me to get there through the power of the Spirit. Lord, help us today. We love you. Thank you for your Word. Thank you for the Spirit that we felt. Thank you for the truth that you've shared with us and the things that we're going to search out deeper. Thank you, God, for every man, woman, boy, or girl who with a desire to come to the house of God tonight. I'm grateful, Lord, for those that are sick in body that want to be here and can't. I pray, God, that you'll touch them and bring them. I pray, God, that you'll help us all come together stronger, help us to believe on you through the power of the Holy Ghost even better than we have. And every time we come to the house of God, let us be aware that the Word is going to assault us. And we want to be able to willingly receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at Poplar Bluff is the first night of Missouri camp meeting. It's the only one that we're having this year. Brother Parkey will be preaching. And uh, then Friday morning and Friday evening, Brother Jason Sisko, uh, there will be a North American mission service at 9 a.m. Friday. And then at 10 o'clock a.m. will be the morning service. And at 7 o'clock Friday night will be the evening service. It's at the Black River Coliseum in Poplar Bluff. You won't be disappointed if you go. Uh, team number eight is church cleaning this week. Sister Maria, Sister Callie, and Brother Cody. We'll have to make sure Sister Callie gets healed by Saturday. <laughs> if not, Brother Cody and Sister Maria have to do it, maybe. Uh, ladies conference, there's a sign-up sheet in the back of the church. Please sign up April 29th to May the 1st. NAYC is July 28th and 30th. If you haven't turned in your $50, you've got to get it turned in. That's your down payment. And this coming up Sunday, spread the word, please. We'll put it on Facebook, share it. We're having a 2 o'clock service. It's our Spring Forward Sunday. And we're going to minister accordingly. There will be no Sunday school classes. Only a 2 o'clock service. Is everybody with me? Anybody not get what I just said? No elements class, no, no, elements class, no Riverbend Kids, no Riverbend Ignited, and no nursery. Well, we'll make a pot of coffee if you want to go get it. <laughs> but it's at 2 o'clock. Everybody online, share that. Okay, it's a 2 o'clock service. That's the only time we do it throughout the year, unless there's a special occasion arises. But it's about the fourth year in a row that we've done a 2 o'clock service and it's worked out really good. And when you set your clock forward and have to get up, you think it's better. That's right, Sister Nadine, and she is the madre of the El Churche. Thank you for coming tonight. We love you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Meeting at 530. Recovery classes. A bunch of them are going to camp meeting. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Amen. That's exciting. That's exciting. And uh, we, uh, we're not going to stop till they all come to church with us and worship with us. Amen. Amen.
get them all full of the Holy Ghost and change the world. Y'all know we can? Um, I'm just going to give y'all fair warning before we're dismissed. A couple of weeks ago, Brother Shannon gave Brother Ronnie my phone number. Y'all ain't going to like it. Because everything I say, he believes it. I mean, really. And not only does he believe it, I gave it, told him an idea I had the other night. He done got a meeting set up next week. We're going to talk about making it happen already. Ain't got no money or nothing. But it's going to happen. We're going to turn the world right side up. Huh? Hey, man, thank y'all for coming tonight. I love you so much. Every one of you, you're dismissed in Jesus' name.